welcome to another lecture of our prologue playlist today we will learn about recursions okay so here we have a program simple program which we have uh, done multiple times using uh, other programming language that is calculating factorial of a number so for here we are just calculating the factorial of a number n which is given by the user and here we are using recursion as you already know that for recursion we need to have a base condition and uh, along with that a function which will call itself so here our base condition is the first statement that is fact 0 comma 1 this means if the number is 0 then its factorial will be 1 okay so all we know that the factorial of 0 is 1 so that is our base condition and what is our recurring function as part the recurring part is that fact of n comma r that is the number is n and the result of the factorial is r so that is what when n greater than 0 only then it will work so we already know for n equals to 0 it is 1 but for n greater than 0 what we do we reduce it by 1 so n1 is n minus 1 okay so if suppose we are having factorial of 4 then it becomes 3 and then we calculate factorial of the reduced number and then after the uh, after that when uh, the result we get after the recurring part of the function is uh, over then the factorial part will be what it will be returning r1 and then r will become r1 into n okay so let me explain it with an example then you will understand so factorial of 4 comma r here we are calculating the factorial of 4 so first it will become what the n1 will become 4 minus 1 that is 3 and we will uh, call the recurring fraction for 3 comma r1 and again uh, on the next line see we are uh, calculating factorial of 3 here n1 becomes 3 minus 1 that is 2 and we are uh, calculating factorial of 2 again so uh, in this way it becomes factorial 0 comma r and we know that factorial 0 comma r is our base condition and it will return as 1 then it will go and track back to our previous statement that is already in the stack or regression stack then it will return 1 and what it will do it will uh, multiply uh, again with the value of n so uh, for the second last statement the value of n was 1 so it will again become 1 into n that is 1 into 1 and it will return 1 to the previous line here the value of n is 2 so it will uh, multiply with 2 and 1 multiplied with 2 becomes 2 and it will be returned to the second statement and then again here n value n's value is 3 so it will be 3 into 2 that is 6 that is factorial of 3 will be 6 and it will return 6 to our first statement uh, and here the value of n is 4 and 6 into 4 will become 24 okay so see it was just uh, calling the factorials in and uh, pushing them into stack and after we reach our base condition it will just returning one by one so to do, uh, do factorial and this type of recurring function things in prologue we use uh, the function recursion that is one base condition and another recurring function call okay so now let's run it and see so we are running factorial of 5 that gives us 120 again factorial of 6 giving us 720 now let's check factorial of 0 so see what will happen see if I run it it is giving us an error so what is the error first read it okay so uh, the procedure we are writing fact 0 is unknown why it is unknown because see there is written fact and there is a slash and 1 this means fact with one argument this is unknown because whatever the functions we have declared inside our code this uh, all fact functions have two arguments that is one for the value of n and one for the answer so if we give another value uh, for ans that is the variable that will give us the answer now it has two arguments and now it is okay okay so now it runs and the value of factorial 0 is 1 now let's check our second program that is also a recursion now here is our second program that is also based on recursion so we will first uh, comment out the first program and here our second program is to check the fibonacci value of the nth term of the fibonacci series okay so the user will give the value of n and we will return the value of the nth term on the fibonacci series so let's see how to do that as this program also requires recursion so we first need to have base condition so the base condition is that we already know the first two terms of a fibonacci series that is fibonacci first term will be 0 and also the second term will be 1 so fib 1 comma 0 and fib 2 comma 1 will be our base conditions okay so uh, if the value entered by user is 1 or 2 then we will just run the base condition and return it but if it is other than that then we will do what then 
we will return the uh, run the function that is uh, recurring functions main part okay so if n comma y here n is the input given by user and y is the output that is the ns fibonacci term so what should we write here so suppose we what we do in the fibonacci term we just add the previous two fibonacci terms okay so we just calculate the fibonacci term of uh, n minus 1 and n minus 2 and we will add them and return so uh, like we add the previous two terms and it, it is our result so now see let's check so what we will doing what we are doing n1 equals to n minus 1 and n2 equals to n minus 2 so you already know how to assign values that is using is keyword okay so n2 becomes n minus 2 now we are calling the fibonacci uh, function recurringly for n1 and n2 so n1 uh, fibonacci of uh, fibonacci term of n1 will return r1 and fibonacci term of n2 will return r2 now we will add both r1 and r2 and store it in y so and y will become our final result so now let's see it with an example so suppose the user input given here is 4 and we are calling the fibonacci function for the input 4 and y will be the output so now let's check first what will happen what n1 will be assigned with value n minus 1 and n2 will be assigned with value n minus 2 so n1 will become 3 and n2 will become 2 okay so now the fibonacci function will be called recurringly for both uh, n1 and n2 so that is fibonacci 3 comma 1 and fibonacci 2 comma 2 after that the rest of the part we will do later because first this two fibonacci uh, functions will be occurring so now we will calculate fibonacci for 3 comma y so again it will become what n1 will become n minus 1 that is uh, n1 will become here 2 and n2 will become 1 so now let's see we already have the value of fib of 1 comma 0 1 and fib of 2 okay so we already have the value of uh, first and second fibonacci term that is when n for n1 1 and 2 okay so these are our base conditions so we will just have the values and return them to the function cost that is fib 2 comma r1 and fib uh, 1 comma r1 and after that we will calculate the value of y from our second uh, statement that is our second call so what will be the value of uh, y in the second statement we will return the value of 1 comma 0 in the first call and uh, sorry in the second call and value of 2 comma 1 in the first call that is the uh, value will be returning to r1 will be 1 and the value returning to r2 will be 0 so let's see uh, what are the base conditions we are using here that is fib 2 comma r1 equals to 1 and fib uh, 1 comma r2 equals to 0 so these values will be returned to our previous statement into the stack and we will calculate y's value that is r1 plus r2 so here r1 will be 1 and r2 will be 0 that is 1 plus 0 equals to 1 again this value of uh, y uh, will be uh, again returned to our previous calls here fib 3 comma r1 and fib 2 comma r2 so according to our base statement the fib of 2 will uh, already uh, become 1 and the fib of 3 we have calculated here in the recurring part that is 1 so the fib of 3 comma r1 will also become 1 and 2 comma r2 will also become uh, 1 so here value of r1 and r2 both is 1 so y will become what y will become r1 plus r2 that is 1 plus 1 equals to 2 now let's run this and check if we are doing it correct or not see here we are checking our value that uh, or the example what we have already explained that is the fib of 4 will become 2 okay so it is giving us correct answer is 2 so now let's check uh, for another value that is 5 okay so fib of 5 what is giving it it is giving us 3 so now let's check for fib of 6 so what is the value of fib of 6 so it will be what it will be value of fib of 5 plus fib of 4 so it should give us 3 plus 2 that is 5 so see the fib of 6 giving us the value 5 so now let's check it for fib of 7 it will be giving us fib of 6 plus fib of 5 that is the previous two value summation so it is 5 plus 3 8 okay so fib of 7 is 8 that is our answer so please do subscribe to our channel and like the video and share with your friends